Now we'll go into assembling the TIG torch. First thing we do is we have a collet body suited to the size tungsten that we have. We have a collet which again matches the size tungsten that we're going to use and that goes into there and that then goes through into there. We have a nozzle which we can get from our uh, nozzle selection. I've selected a number five for this case. We then put our TIG torch together. We put the tungsten and that through there and make sure that our collet body is nice and tight. Just give it a tweak. We make our tungsten out too long and then we put our back cap on. At this stage, not tightening it right up. We put our nozzle on. Making sure we give it an extra tweak. We then adjust our stick out on DC about 8 to 10 mil and we tighten our back cap up and the TIG torch should be good to go. Now we're going to connect the TIG torch to the Strata Advanced TIG 2 row 5 AC-DC and if we look down here we have a negative terminal and a positive terminal we always connect the TIG torch to the negative terminal, so we put that in. And we give it a tweak. We then connect our gas hose. And lastly, we connect our plug for the TIG torch, so all the remotes and everything work. And the TIG torch is connected successfully. Now the TIG torch is connected, we now connect our earth into the positive terminal. Make sure it's locked in, and then we make sure that when we connect the clamp to the workpiece that it's a good contact. The Strato Advanced TIG 205 AC-DC has a very simple interface to use. We can scroll through the modes that we want by just pushing the suitable button line that belongs to each line. The first line is HF start, if we want to use HF to get the arc going. We push it again, we come to lift arc, where we come down, touch the job, lift off. This is very handy when HF is not applicable or you're working in environments where HF can't be used and lift arc can be. The last one on this first line is the arc welding mode. This is for when you want to use the uh, stick electrode, we can set it into the arc welding mode. The second line tells us that we can use DC. We scroll down, we have AC square wave, which is the most common one used. And then we have AC sine wave. This is a softer arc based around the old technology welders and a lot of people still like the sine wave. This line here, we have start off with spot time. This allows us to push the trigger. The machine will weld for a while and time itself out so we can get the same spots all the time. The next one is pulse mode. This is the one where we want to turn the machine on to pulse both in DC or AC or we can have no pulse at all and we turn it off there. The last line here we go into, we scroll into 2T, I push my finger on the button, the machine will stay active until I let my finger off, it will ramp down and stop. I then put it into 4T, 4T I will push the button, it will stay at the starting current until I let it go, it will ramp up to peak current and it will stay at peak current until I push the button again, it will ramp down to finishing current until I release my finger and the machine will go and stop. The main screen controls are controlled by these two buttons here. One moves it to the left and one moves it to the right. So we start off here, we have pre-gas. Now pre-gas just allows a bit of time 
so the tungsten is covered and we have a pathway for the HF and welding current to flow. So I normally set that at 0.2 of a second. We then use the scroll button to move to our next one. This only works in 4T and it's called start current. Now start current just allows the puddle to build up to what you want before you ramp up to your peak current. I normally set that at 20 amps for um, aluminium or AC and 15 amps for DC. We go to ramp up. Ramp up just gives a little time to ramp up to the peak current. Um, and I set that normally at about a half a second is a good starting point. We move up to our peak current. Now our peak current controls the amount of energy that we use to melt the material and this machine goes from 10 amps up to 200 amps. We scroll through the next one, downslope. Now downslope allows a little bit of time at the end when we take our finger off the torch to wind down so it fills up the little pinhole at the end. A good starting point for downslope is about 1.5 seconds. The next one after that again only works in 4T and it is finishing current. Now I set the finishing current at around about again 15 amps for DC and 20 amps for AC. The last one on the settings is post gas. Now post gas should be set at roughly one second per 10 amps. A good starting point is about eight seconds. Now post gas is very underestimated. It is to protect the tungsten as it's cooling down and also to help stop form an oxidation coating on the end of the tungsten so we get a good restart. When the TIG is in the AC position, down here I've set it into AC square wave, we bring in a couple of more features. To get to these we scroll through and the first one is AC balance. Now AC balance works from a minus, which is more cleaning, to zero, which is a balanced wave, to a plus, which is more penetration. One of the features that the Advanced TIG 205 has is frequency hertz. Now frequency hertz we range on this machine from 50 hertz up to 250 hertz. As the hertz increases the arc column strengthens on AC and we get a very finer weld, a more concentrated arc and we can almost over 120 hertz keep a very good semi point when we're doing aluminium and this means we can get a more concentrated arc, less radiated heat. At 250 hertz we get a very very strong column and we get a very very pinpointed arc but we do have to be aware of the sound. Now I'm going to talk about how to set up the advanced tick into pulse mode. We can have pulse mode in both DC and AC. We turn the pulse on by going through this line here and putting it onto pulse. Pulse. I'm in 2T. Now when we have pulse, we have to set our peak current, which I'm going to set at 100 amps. Now we have to set our base or trough current, and we do that by this little light here. And I'm going to set that at 40 amps. I like to drop the pulse by 60% or 40% of peak current, whichever way you want to do it. So I've set that at 40. Now we'll go up to our peak current. The next one is how long it's going to stay up at our peak current. And I like to set that as a starting point at 50%. So we set it at 50%, which means it spends 50% of the time at the peak, 50% at the time at the base. The next one is how often this pulse is going to work. Now a good starting point, this machine starts at very, very low, half a second, up to, I like to set it about two se pulses per second. So that one's set. And now we can go through the rest of the, the parameters and we're ready to weld. Now we're going to set the advanced TIG up for arc welding. It's a very nice arc welder. To do this, we grab the first line here and we scroll down till we come up to the arc. 
The next one we can either do arc welding in AC or DC. I prefer DC. And now we have to set a couple of other functions in behind. And we get to them by pushing the select button. At the moment you can see the A for amperage. The next one here is for what we call a hot start. This reaches out and gives us more energy at the beginning of the arc so the electrode won't stick when we're starting and helps to start the harder to start electrodes. A good starting point is around about 30 to 40 on the arc start. The next one after that is called arc force or dig, whichever name you prefer. And this works when the rider is trying to dig in, short out and would normally go out. We can allow it to grab more energy to keep the arc going. So again, my personal choice is around about somewhere around about 40. Now they're set, we connect it and we can adjust our amperage to suit the electrode. Now you can get this from the information on the electrode that you're using. The most important thing when you're setting up for arc welding is to make sure that the electrode handpiece is put into the right jack plug. We have a positive and we have a negative. Please read the packet to find out which way around your electrode's going. I'm using a 7018 and I've checked the packet and it tells me I need to put my handpiece into the positive side. So I'm going to put that in there and lock it in. This leaves the earth to go into the negative side. and lock it in. Make sure that when you're connecting your air to the job that's a good air so you get a good electrical contact. Now the handpiece that comes with the machine is a screw type handpiece and we can fit the electrode by holding on to the base, unscrewing the top, putting our electrode in the jaws and then tightening it up. Make sure that your amperage is right for the electrode again and now we're ready to weld. Two other features that are built into the Strata Advanced Tech 205 AC-DC. The first one is PFC. Now PFC is, stands for Power Factor Correction. This allows for the correction of the voltage and the amperage input, bringing them together. And when this happens, the more it happens, the closer it is, the more efficient the machine runs. This makes the output power more useful for the input power. This helps when running it on generators extension leads, work sites, and areas where there is poor power. So PFC is a little extra in cost, but it is well worth having in a machine. The second feature that the Strata Advanced TIG 205 AC-DC has is multi-voltage. This means that the voltage on the input side can drop down to a certain level without affecting the output. You must be aware that once the voltage drops down to a certain level, the output current of the machine will be affected. The maximum output current will be reduced. This is to protect the input current. So if you find at any stage that the machine has dropped its maximum output current, please check that your input voltage is at a level to run the machine properly, or you might be running it on a long extension lead which affects the input power.